always love trains. I'm never happier than when I'm tinkering away with my own train set up here in the attic. I'm Peter Snow, and this has been my passion ever since I was a child. I enjoy mixing different carriages from different eras, making my own unique train. Which got me thinking, what if I could do this for real? Well, me and my partner in crime, engineering whiz kid Henry Coe, we thought we'd get onto a mad idea. What if we could build our very own time train, made up of historical carriages, each from a different era? Over the last six months, we've achieved something quite incredible. Restoration experts from across the country have taken four derelict coaches and brought them back to life. From an 1860s four-wheeler, which does look absolutely wonderful, to a 1960s Pullman dining car. Side. They've even restored a teak treasure designed by the man who made the Flying Scotsman. I saw her six months ago, she was a wreck. Yes, she was. And an incredibly rare carriage used by Queen Victoria herself. Even in this terrible weather, she looks an absolute gem. And now we're ready for the grand finale to our remarkable project. Joining all four coaches together in one unique train. And her passengers? All right, it's first time open for 90 years, then. The brilliant workers who made it all possible. The axle's going up with the bogey. And we'll clean all that out, degrease it. And there's one final treat. I'm going to fulfill a childhood dream. A hundred years of railway history pulled by a locomotive uh, driven by me. <laughs> We're in North Wales, where the Langothlan Heritage Railway will play host to our time train. Ten miles of track through some absolutely spectacular countryside, snaking along the banks of the exuberant River Dee. It's the perfect spot for our celebratory journey. But if we're to get our celebrations off the ground, we've got to get three of our coaches here, by road. It's an easy task, but at least one carriage is already here. The 1912 Grizzly design, restored by the Langochlan team in sheds just up the track. But our other three carriages have long journeys ahead, starting from Yorkshire, Birmingham, and even the Isle of Wight. They need to be transported along the increasingly narrow and winding roads of North Wales. Our first move is also our oldest. An 1864 wooden coach restored on the Isle of Wight. She worked on the railway here for over 50 years but when we found her, she was in a sorry old state. Oh, my goodness! We can't be serious. This thing's a total wreck. That is, until restorers Peter Jardine and Mark Brinton got their hands on her. How would you describe the state of this coach? Uh, tired. Very tired. Tired? It's a challenge because nobody's built a four-wheel carriage under frame in wood for a great many years. Punishing work paid off. And the finished result? Oh, goodness me, she does look absolutely wonderful, doesn't she? She's back to how she looked in her heyday. The 1860s were a golden era, when train travel was new and exciting. Back then, our carriage transported well-to-do holidaymakers to the enticing seaside resorts of the Isle of Wight, all flocking to the island in the footsteps of Queen Victoria herself. And now it's time for our carriage to take a holiday of her own. She'll travel by ferry, crossing the busy Solent for the first time since she arrived on the island in 1864. The 
man in charge of moving all three carriages in just one week is Andrew Goodman, a 30-year veteran of the heavy haulage industry. We're uh, ready to load the coach. They're still working on it at the present. They said they'd be 11th hour and 59th minute, so that's literally the case. We have got a boat to catch this afternoon. We need to be back in the port for about 3 o'clock, and uh, the boat goes at 4, so a slight nervous eye on the, uh, on the clock at the present, just making sure that uh, we don't miss it. Andrew's special low loader has rail tracks fitted along its length for the carriage to sit on. But to get her on board, a special ramp needs to be built. Come a little bit more, then. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this out, and it should go, go in. It's a nervous time for Mark and Peter. Nothing more than a steel cable supporting their pride and joy. Try push it again, Lee. Go forward and touch, Lee. One thing is useful. But the lorry can do the job of clearing and throwing branches out of the way. <laughs> the carriage is now complete. Take it back to the mainland for the first time, 153 years, and up to Clangotham for a run. There's a lot of work by a lot of people, and everyone's happy now to see the job complete. Our carriage has an epic 230-mile journey ahead of her. Peter and Mark will meet her in Langothlan when they'll be guests of honour on board our time train. So I'll be up there and we'll get a run in it and see this and also see what people have done with the others. The narrow lanes of the Isle of Wight aren't used to such large of historic loads. Luckily, it's only two and a half miles to the ferry terminal. Inch by inch and with no margin for error, our carriage squeezes on board. And as we set sail for the mainland, it does beg the question, is there an easier way? Well, you may be wondering why we didn't just bring them into Langotland by rail. Well, sadly, the track runs out right underneath the road bridge. This is all that remains of the link between Langotland Steam Railway, as it's now called, and the main line at Ruaben, some 10 miles down the track. It's just about passable on foot. But the last train to come through here was in 1968. Having lost money for years, Langochlan, along with over 2,000 other stations, was earmarked for closure in the now infamous Beeching Report of 1963. Almost from the day that the report was written, rail enthusiasts began campaigns to reopen some as heritage lines, places of living history. And the Langochland line was one of the first to rise from the dead. The last public train ran in 1968, leaving the station derelict. But in the early 70s, a group of enthusiasts began to lay the track once more. And by 1975, the station reopened. Gradually, year by year, its track was extended, creeping along the Vale of Langotlan, one abandoned station after another. Today, the line is almost 10 miles long. Across the country, there are now over 100 heritage lines with over 400 stations and more than 500 miles of track. In some ways, our time train, four coaches and 100 years of railway history is a celebration of our unique world-leading heritage industry.
But for that celebration to happen, we have to get our coaches to lend Gotham's restored railway track. Having traveled three miles across the busy Solent, our 1864 carriage is now ready to hit the road for her long trip to Wales. Who could have imagined back in 1864 that one day she'd be whizzing along a 21st century motorway? It's the fastest our little four-wheeler has ever traveled. And soon the 12 meter long load is navigating the narrow Welsh roads. Okay. She's the first of our carriages to arrive in Langothlan. It's a relief for Isle of Wight apprentice Callum, who's there to greet her. Quite nerve wracking watching it being unloaded. We don't want to see it derail. But uh, yeah, I'm quite glad it's here safe and sound. And uh, excited for the rest of the week, really. One down, two to go. But with our Pullman a whopping 19 metres long, and the other a priceless piece of royal history, everyone's going to need nerves of steel. A van to run a time train on the Langothlan Railway of four classic restored carriages is beginning to come together. In Birmingham, our next carriage is the Hollywood starlet of our time train. A 1960s Pullman dining car, the ultimate icon of glamour and luxury on the railways. It may be hard to imagine now, but six months ago, this beauty was a real eyesore. The inside looks pretty tatty, uh, but it... The outside looks terrible. Yeah, it's awful, yeah. <laughs> this fading star badly needed a facelift. Her paint was peeling, her seats far from luxurious, and the kitchen... Oh, my goodness me! This is terrifying! In the 60s, anyone who was anyone dined on board our Pullman. Five-star cuisine, attentive stewards, it really was the height of luxury. So at the Tysley Locomotive Works, restorers Dave, Les, Stuart and Nigel worked around the clock to turn decay into delight. Gotta tell you, mate, I think you've absolutely nailed it. It is lovely. It couldn't be nicer. Yeah, I mean, the wood, this is magnificent. It's a remarkable transformation and will play a vital role in our time train, hosting a celebration lunch for all our restorers. For Andrew and his moving team, not only is this carriage three times longer than the last one, but there's also a kitchen with pots and pans, crockery and cutlery. Little wonder Nigel and Stuart are looking on like anxious parents. Some of the things that could go wrong, uh, things hitting the bodywork off a bridge or off another vehicle or breaking a window, scratching the paint, that would be the worst thing. Because that's hard to put right. But anything like that would be horrendous at this stage. We've uh, spent a lot of time. It's been six months of hard effort. We'll be sad to see it go. I hope they look after it. Well, look after it, they do. Because the 100 miles to Langothlan go without a hitch. As she pulls into town, she's a real showstopper. Unfortunately, she's a traffic stopper too. The rear steering mechanism fails. And until it's fixed, our Pullman is going nowhere. much to the dismay of local motorists. We identified that there's a short on the uh, electric circuit that controls the steering at the back of the trailer. Unfortunately, at the present, we've lost that. So that's what we're just trying to overcome. After travelling 100 miles, it's the final 200 yards that are causing the team grief.
It's another five hours before our Pullman is finally safely delivered to the Langothland Yard. Heavy haulage is all about problem solving. Uh, so, yes, there's a relief now that we've, uh, we've overcome the difficulties. Uh, it's always very frustrating. You can always do without the problems, without the delays, but it's just part of the job. We now have half of our special time train coaches safely at Langothland, with our 1864 wooden coach meeting its 1960 cousin, the Pullman. But between them will be perhaps the grandest carriage of all in our fleet. Queen Victoria's personal coach, one of only two of her carriages still in existence. Built by the London South Western Railway in 1887, it carried Her Majesty and her entourage from Windsor down to the south coast for holidays. What stories this coach could tell. Based at the Emsay and Bolton Abbey Steam Railway in North Yorkshire, six months ago, this carriage was an absolute disaster. This is a wreck. It is at the moment, but uh, it's not going to stay that way for long. <laughs> Having been rotting under tarpaulins for 20 years, it took a special family team of restorers to save this extraordinary piece of history. Stephen Middleton, his wife Ying and their daughter Honey put everything they had into this one. I'm looking at probably 13, 14 hours a day. And this has been my 15th day non-stop. I feel I'm like a, a woman without a husband for a couple of months. But the final result was well worth the effort. And the interior finish... Stephen, this is unbelievable. It's so luxurious, you know, it is fit for a queen, isn't it? Our royal carriage is now a priceless, irreplaceable artefact. And unsurprisingly, Stephen is there to check Andrew's team load it safely. This is the most critical bit. It's uh, on the cable, being towed up to the ramp, but the ramp is a good shallow angle. But it's not doing the coach any harm. It's going to pass a lot of trees. And I'm rather concerned the painting might suffer with the branches. <laughs> I'll sleep well once I hear it's landed safely, virtually unscathed at Langothan. A 120 mile journey lies ahead. But at the end, a unique meeting of four carriages with four different stories to tell. Our Pullman stopped traffic, but our royal carriage stops people in their tracks. With only one other surviving carriage used by Queen Victoria anywhere in the world, a glimpse of such grandeur outside the museum really is something very special. This isn't the first time that a royal train has visited Langoclan. In 1889, Her Majesty came here on one of her very early royal tours, a visit that wouldn't have been possible without the railway. Back then, Queen Victoria travelled the entire line from Rouabon through to Bala, taking tea at Brintacilio Hall, just outside Langochlan. She was so taken with the area, she chastised her son, the Prince of Wales, for not visiting, writing, it's very wrong of him not to come here. It's only five hours from London. The Prince takes his title from this country, which is so beautiful. It's said that one of the reasons why Her Majesty visited the Vale of Langothan was because she was told that it was even more beautiful than her beloved Deeside in Scotland, 
Whatever the truth, her visit put Langothlan firmly on the map as a tourist destination. Mind you, getting a train here by rail in 1889 was a lot easier than getting one here by road today. Does anyone own this red car here? It takes a skillful driver and some very careful manoeuvring. But eventually, our royal coach is delivered, with not a scratch on her. Well, we've just delivered the, uh, the last of the coaches to uh, Langothlan, so, uh, yeah, we've uh, completed the series of moves that we need to do this week. There we are. Job done. There's just one more carriage to make our time train complete. And luckily, it doesn't have far to travel. Our 1912 carriage, built by the Great Northern Railway, was restored locally at the Langothlan Carriage Works by a uniquely committed team of restorers and owner, Peter Lund. Having spent 40 years rotting away, it was in a frightful state when we first saw it. Pretty scruffy, Peter. Got a lot of work to do. Very there. scruffy, I'm afraid. <laughs> it's been neglected for a very long time. A far cry from 1912, when passenger numbers on Britain's railways were at an all-time high. Her third-class compartments and posh first-class salon meant our coach spent her days packed with everyone from working-class families to the smartest toffs. The heritage of this carriage is astounding. You know, it's, it's 105 years old. It's taken people to two world wars. It's taken people to holidays all over the country. Amazing. You're bringing tears to my eyes. This commitment to our heritage inspired the Langothlan team, and their restored carriage leaves a lasting historical legacy. Wow, Peter, this is a transformation. Wonderful. It's the finishing touch to this remarkable project. Four periods of history brought back to life to sit side by side in a train through time. It falls to the Langothlan boys, Martin and Richard, to assemble this enchanting fleet of carriages. Extremely excited. It's going to be fantastic seeing that all four restoration projects all together. I think it's a moment that none of us can miss, really, because it's actually a pinnacle of railway heritage engineering. But this clash of eras creates some particular engineering challenges, especially when it comes to our oldest carriage from 1864. Incredibly, when our four-wheeler was built, she had no brakes, rather like almost all other coaches of her era. Instead, a guard's van would be attached with a simple handbrake like this. When the driver blew his whistle, the guard would wind on the brake. Not the best way, you might think, of stopping hundreds of tonnes of train. It caused multiple accidents, and in 1889, the government insisted that proper fail-safe brakes must be fitted to all passenger coaches. Since then, trains have been protected by a braking system supplied by the locomotive, running on pressure. The brakes lock on the minute this pipe is broken. Because our 1864 carriage has no brakes, we've got special dispensation to run the brake pipe from the Royal Coach under the four-wheeler to a brake van behind. But the system needs to be pressure tested to make sure it works. It'll take up a little time to uh, build up pressure. It's struggling a little bit now. It could mean that we got a leak somewhere. So what we'll have to do is just have a quick run down the train and just see if we can hear anything. If you can't build up vacuum, that means it's failed the test, which means it can't run. After six months of restoration work, and as the boys toil late into the night, it's horrifying to think a leaking pipe could hold up our entire time train.
Six months ago, it was hard to believe that this day would ever arrive. But on an autumn morning in Langothlan, my madcap dream is becoming a reality. The loco boys have been up since the break of day, gently bringing the boiler up to pressure. But this beautiful Standard 4 class locomotive plays second fiddle to our main event. Today, we're making restoration history. After an astonishing six months, our four iconic carriages are coupled up. A living record of how the way we traveled changed across a hundred years. From early rail journeys to fine dining luxury, these carriages have carried factory workers, soldiers, heads of state, and even royalty. And now, at last, all these eras have come together. And the gifted teams who made it possible arrived to see the full train for the very first time. Did you do that? Yeah. How did you do that? What's that, 10 foot wheel wide? Uh, it's about that, yeah. First class in 1964 when the carriage was built. I think that one was about three times what that was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Local boys Richard and Martin are going back to 1864, travelling first class with Mark and Peter from the Isle of Wight. Yeah, let's have a look. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, very smart. Oh, I like this. <laughs> <laughs> that is well comfy, isn't it? I really like that. The Middleton family take Tysley's Dave and Nigel on a regal step back in time to 1887. Yeah, it's yeah. come good, hasn't it? To travel with Queen Victoria. Do you know these inside handles? Yeah. They are all uh, av uh, made of ivory. Ivory, yeah. I spent ages use toothbrush and uh, toothpaste to clean them. Yeah. It was green colour, looks horrible. Yeah, they're really nice details. To help celebrate this momentous day, the Langothlan Silver Band is here to play us off with a version of See the Conquering Hero Comes. This symbolic song was first played at the opening of the Liverpool and Manchester Railway on the 15th of September, 1830. This 35 miles of track was the first line to connect two major towns and provide a scheduled passenger service, a historic moment for British rail travel. Back then, it was George Stevenson himself often nicknamed the father of the railways at the controls of the locomotive. Today, it's a rather lesser known figure. For the last few months, I've been learning to drive a steam locomotive. But like all learner drivers, I've been learning on a rather small vehicle. But now, I'm about to graduate to something a bit more powerful. This standard four-class loco was one of the first to be built by the newly nationalized British Railways over 60 years ago and at over 40 feet long and weighing in at a whopping 79 tons, it's a real monster. Terrific. Look at that. Slave. I'm still a learner driver, so Fireman Graham and regular driver Paul are on hand with a few words of wisdom. Paul, what are the snags ahead of us, the possible snags? The snags uh, mainly are that uh, you're going to get some slippage because the rail head is, uh, is wet. Oh which makes it particularly greasy. I've got to be careful what I do, and I'm particularly concerned that I'm actually pulling 100 tonnes behind this locomotive. Now, Paul, if I do something wrong, you'll slam me on the shoulder, right? Or you'll throttle me or something. Just stop me making a mess of it. There's right? a choice there, <laughs> Peter. As I get to grips with the controls, Henry is tucked away in our Pullman dining car with chef Ben setting up a well-deserved celebratory lunch for our restoration teams. Just got my gloves on, that's all that matters, Ben, isn't it? You look the part. But finally, it's time to strike up the band for a rousing send-off. It's the moment we've all been waiting for. <laughs> Okay, boys, the guard says we can go, we can go. Let's the whistle, go then. Blow the whistle, pull the chain. Oh, dear, not a good start. 
Okay. Handbrake off. Handbrake off. And open the regulator. Handbrake off, open the regulator. Here we go. See the conquering hero comes. Sound the trumpets. Beat the drums. Our time train has left the station. It is a big day. Um, yeah, I'm a cool customer. Uh, but even so, I can feel the hairs in the back of my neck. And um, yes, she's a little moved as well. This is really superb. This is. Yeah, you got the sun coming out. We've got a lovely coach to ride in. What, what, what more can you ask for? And some of the passengers even seem impressed with my driving. It's just done very well to start on a wet rail in Wales in autumn with the leaves on the line. With over a thousand horsepower at my fingertips, it's time to really open her up. She's bombing along very nicely. train set in the attic to this. A hundred years of railway history in a single train. What a way to celebrate the golden age of the railways. Each carriage marks a moment in time, but each also tells the story of the men and women who restored them. Tell you what, once it gets moving, this is actually quite smooth, isn't it, really? Would you like to see what uh, this looked like before uh, we started on it? Oh, yes, please, yeah. Wow, that's amazing, isn't it? That is brilliant how you've gone from something, which is so much of a patchwork quilt, there to what you've got now. What a challenge. Yeah. yeah. Mark was in charge of the underframe, but everything else fell on the shoulders of Peter Jardine. I think one of the most distinctive things of these is the uh, blue top lights. Jack of all trades, master of none. But this is needlework. I mean, uh, is there anything you can't do? You're a metal worker as well. Uh, actually, I'm a qualified mechanical engineer. That was my oh, job. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> the attention to details as well. It's, it's the little details. It's the details which matter on something like this. Yeah, exactly. All your screw heads are all facing in the same direction. As they should be. Yes, as they should be. It is a really fantastic job, and I hope you're really proud of this one. We are. Thank you. Each of our carriages had its own set of challenges, and our 1912 teak-clad Gresley was no exception. Little more than a skip on wheels, the pressures of this transformation were certainly felt by owner Peter Lund. Now, how would you describe the problems you've had in the last few weeks? Gargantuan. There's no other description for it. Everything that could go wrong with this coach has gone wrong with it. But it all came good, and Peter's now able to show off the hard work to one of the Pullman guys, Stuart. This is how we started. I have to say, I think you've done a, uh, I think you've done a marvellous job. I really do. One of the worst jobs was doing the roof. It's a canvas roof on top of wood, and we have this, what they call roofing compound, which is the most foul-smelling, evil stuff. Our roof, of course, being a steel roof, we needle gunned it off, stripped it back to bare. Three noisy days of needle gunning, and um, you've got a half-decent roof again. So not quite the problems you had with yours. These meticulously restored carriages evoke a time when train travel, like society, was riven by class. But even third class looks pretty good to me. This is one of my favourite compartments. But it's a pretty austere compartment, you know. There's no seat rests, um, there's no shoulder reading lights, and there's a very small luggage rack. I think the detailing in here is uh, superb. The Great. A few pictures and the original mirrors really yeah. um, add something to the whole uh, the whole atmosphere of the coach. Yeah, yeah, very impressive. 
Every member of our restoration teams has a story to share. But these stories say as much about our team's dedication as they do about the restorations themselves. The work that's been done on the carriages has been great. The best part was really when we started putting the timbers back in, and it started to look like a carriage yeah, again. Yeah, you and start then, to get into that construction yeah. rather than destruction fight. Yeah, yeah, you go to that stop point on that, don't you? And that when it, one minute in, that it just looks like a mess, and then all of a sudden it's, wow, it comes back to life. It's good to see the teams getting on, and I'm getting some positive feedback as well. They're so doing very nicely, Peter. Well, I have been learning. I'm not only lucky enough to drive this incomparable train, but today I'm able to tick another item from my bucket list. Stand by for the tunnel, eh? Bowen Tunnel, the second longest tunnel on a preserved railway. Here's the tunnel coming down. <laughs> Here we go then, Peter. Here we go. 689 yards of complete darkness. <laughs> what a thrill. Got a smoke coming in here. <laughs> Luckily, our Bresley carriage was one of the first to be fitted with electric lights. Now we're in the tunnel. It's, uh, it's great to see that the lights work. Um... Yeah, Langofflin Spark, he's done a great job. We can, uh, we can see what we're doing. Each carriage in our historic lineup defines an era in rail travel. But when it comes to sheer luxury, look no further than our Royal Saloon, Queen Victoria's personal carriage. Its owner, Stephen Middleton, may be an experienced restorer, but in order to turn this carriage around in six months, he needed the help of his whole family. So with all this work you've been doing, how's the family relationship going? We're still friends? Yes. <laughs> I we think haven't consulted solicitors yet. <laughs> <laughs> we feel really proud to think six months ago, this coach body, which is what it was, was full of spiders webs. There was most of this side missing. Uh, and I think most people thought we were crazy thinking we could do it in six months. And quite frankly, the sensible part of my brain thought we were crazy as well. It's amazing what all the teams have achieved, really. Absolutely fantastic. It's so emotional. Your dream really come true, and my tears in my eyes. <laughs> I'd never seen old coaches like this other than in a museum, and to see them actually on the rails, it marks the dedication of the people that have done the restoration. It's not just a train, it's not just a carriage, it's history on wheels. A history brought back to life by the passion and dedication of our restoration teams, making my dream of a time train come true. And what an absolute privilege it's been to drive it. Coming in the station. Make sure we stop at the station. <laughs> Great stuff, we've done it. Yeah. We've arrived. Phew, that was fantastic. Got all the stops and starts right. We didn't have a collision with anybody and everything went pretty well. I've always dreamt of doing this since I was a kid and I've actually achieved my life's dream. Anyway, um, a bit famished now, so I think what I'm gonna do is shed this boiler suit, go into the Pullman and get some grub. A hundred years of history steaming through the Welsh valleys. Our time train has travelled through the 1860s, the 1880s, and into the early 20th century with our 1912 carriage. For our return journey, our restoration teams are steaming into the 1960s to sample fine dining in our Pullman car, Eagle. Well, the celebrations continue now with us serving lunch. We've got carrots. Yep. We've got new potatoes. Yep. Have you got any meat or anything? Oh, we've got a bit of meat. OK. Putting the Pullman's newly restored kitchen through her paces with a lunch from the period is chef Ben Mason. The six people in a row. OK. So we do uh, six plates at a time. Right. Just feeling a little bit lost here. Ding, ding, salmon. Ham and salmon. Yes, sir. All right. 
Traditionally, it would be my job to serve around 200 first-class passengers. Today, I've just got the 20 VIPs to look after. Peter. My dear chap. Uh, you have a choice of salmon or ham? Uh, salmon, please. Thank you very much. Are you steady on your feet, old chap? I'm very worried <laughs> you about you. You can have the ham, mate. You're getting on, of course, yeah, aren't you? Now? I'm, I'm just worried about the tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Right, Stuart, let's oh, look here at you go. Now look, yeah. salmon is the order of the day. Oh, that's lovely, that is. Yeah. Oh, How lovely. is it, Peter? Is well, it that is extremely good. good Can good, you tell good. Ben in the galley or the kitchen of his school? It's really good. I'll tell him. And, and it's beautifully weighted on, if I may say so. The weight, dear boy. The weight, if there's a job for you so in you quite enjoying Sydney it. Street. Yeah. <laughs> How are you feeling about travelling on the whole time train? Not just with your carriage, this one, but all of them. <laughs> It's a great experience. Four carriages spending 100 years of four designs. Everyone's different. Sure. It's a unique experience bringing together these 100 years of history. Yeah, a really great team effort. And of course, this coach is your coach. She's our Dave. coach. Yes. Your coach. That's it. Yes. Are you proud of it? That it looks oh, all right yes, to me. Yes. Definitely. Absolutely, yeah. The name Pullman just sort of evokes all memories of all sorts of exciting yeah. meals. And yes. And it'll go on, because this coach will provide meals for people up and down the country, yeah? yeah. All down to you guys. Yes. Well done. Brilliant. And let's have a quick challenge. Come on. Yes. Here's the Pullman. Here's the Pullman. Yes. And the time Cheers. train. Cheers. <laughs> You're very good help. Thank you. First class food and first class company. But what do our other restorers make of our Pullman? What do you think of it? What do you think of Les's work? Yes, I enjoy the courage. Yes, yeah, I mean, you're an expert too. I mean, have you done a good job or is it uh, sort of three or four stars rather than five? What do you think? I think it's five stars. Five stars, exactly. It's very, very good. Well done, Les. Perfect. The Pullman is a roaring success. But as we head back through Berwyn Tunnel, it becomes evident that the Tysley boys have missed one vital component. Ben! What? Where are you? A light bulb. The lights have gone out. <laughs> well, so am I then. How long does it last? <laughs> oh, but we're back in business, mate. Each carriage in our sensational lineup marks a moment in time. They've borne witness to the day-to-day -day lives of generations of passengers. The earliest took families on the very first seaside holidays. Our royal coach allowed Queen Victoria to be seen by her subjects as never before. The 1912 Grizzly took soldiers to the First World War. And our Pullman served sharply dressed businessmen doing deals on the move as Beatlemania swept Britain. How times changed in the lifetime of these four carriages. I mean, this coach in particular, it brings back memories of being a child in the 60s when my father travelling on this privilege ticket, the service, the standards of Pullmans, and you look at what they've done here. It looks brand new, it looks mint. Your coach on the Isle of Wight, superb job. <laughs> The Isle of Wight one is very good, but I'd say the Queen Victorian, the Victoria coach. I mean, it's just all the padding on the walls, you know, like all around the outside. You know, it's it's different, very different to anything else, isn't it? In bringing together four historic carriages, we've also brought together some of the brightest stars in British restoration: men, women, experienced masters, and first timers. So is this your first restoration? Yeah, it's my first restoration. Um, I was taken on to do this job back in May. Yeah, I did have a full event head of hair before I started. Uh, slowly to be declining. Ever I think since. we've all got a bit grey. Yeah. Mark had dark hair when he started. <laughs> Our time train is a real testament to Britain's inspirational community of heritage railway experts. For me, for me, I reckon that we've got the best craftsmen and women. When it comes to industrial heritage, you know, restoring stuff, I think we've got the best in the world. What, what do you reckon? I think we probably have. Um, but you still need to bring people through who are willing to get their hands dirty, 
But when you find younger people who are willing to commit to a job, to, to learning a try, learning a skill, then I think they need to be nurtured and brought through and um, they can see what the final result is. After pouring everything into their restorations, only one question remains. Stuart, honestly, would you do it again? Yep, bring this one in on Monday and we'll start it. Really? Yep. You see, that's passion, isn't it? Yeah, I'd definitely do it again. It's been a, it's been a real challenge, but it's what keeps me going. And it's this passion that has fueled these restorations from start to finish. It's not just a job or a hobby, it's the desire to create something truly unique. And our time train is just that, a beacon to the world, British restoration at its very best. Not only is my tummy a bit full after that really excellent lunch, but also, I must admit, my old heart's a bit stirred too. I mean, what our restorers have achieved is something truly extraordinary. Perhaps it's hard to imagine when you're stuck on a packed commuter platform, but our carriages are not just about getting from A to B. They are history on the move, the journey from then to now.